So Dan of the Mano stopped by again. He wants to trade some, uh, well, actually he wants me to look at some yo-yos and, and evaluate them, maybe give them a little price. And what he really wants to know is, did he find two majors? And for those folks that don't know what a major is, a major yo-yo is a yo-yo that has sold for over $1,000 at auction. And some people, myself, I like to consider it actually yo-yos that actually had a long run for it to be a major, but some people will consider like the Nixon yo-yo, which sold for over, what, $16,000. They consider that a major yo-yo. But anyway, the bottom line, the minimum amount for a yo-yo to be considered a major is to have sold at auction at some point in time for over $1,000. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's now available for under a thousand dollars because for instance the goody uh, rainbow at one time sold for over two thousand dollars an individual one and then of course they had the fines of the boxes and now you can pick up a, a pretty much minty mint goody rainbow for around three hundred dollars some other majors might be a flores Candy Swirl, a regular Flores at one time actually sold for over uh, $1,000. There's several them out there, some of the Tom Coon yo-yo, certainly the um, Olympic yo-yo that he made, which was a very, very limited run. Probably some of the reverse Tom Coons that are out there, the reverse Flying Camel would be a major if they ever sold. Some of these have never sold, but when they sell, they'll be over $1,000. So those are examples of majors. So now what we want to find out is, did he find a couple of majors? So let's let's open the box up and see what you got in there. All right, let's check it out. Okay, right well, here. okay, well, the first one. Let's let's take a look at this first one here because that one really catches your eye right off. And if anybody that is a serious Yolo collector notices, they'll say, "That's a Flores." It would be what we call a candy swirl or candy stripe Flores. Uh, these are absolutely great yo-yos. The only problem is, and Dano knows what I'm going to say. What am I going to say, Dano? Well, unfortunately, this yo-yo doesn't have any kind of stamp or seal on it. And a yo-yo without a stamp or seal is just a yo-yo. Now, I will say in this case, this is a minty mint Flores. Uh, it is in perfect condition. You just, you just can't get a better looking one than this but what is missing is the seal. So great yo-yo display, great yo-yo to show people what a Flores yo-yo looks like. Thin string gap and a beautiful colors, just very well preserved. If this had a seal, yes, this would probably be a major and be worth over a thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> so close, <laughs> so close. Well, luckily for me, I, I'm not in the market of selling this thing. It's a collectible for me, and um, I'm gonna enjoy it. And very good. It, it's incredible. Yes. No yes. matter what. Well, I, I would say, is that your first Flores, or do you it's, have another? One? I actually have a Flores C, uh, with with a stamp on okay. it. Okay. So I do okay. have that. So you are a Jedi yo-yo collector. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I do appreciate it, Lucky. <laughs> All right. Now the next one is a very special yo-yo. And I, I'm, I'm going to be gonna, very careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a Shuko Ju. And the derivative, I guess, from that is French. Uh, they would sometimes call their yo yo's uh, Ju And that, and part of my French pronunciation, because I am, I'm terrible at it, but Ju means toy in French. This was made in Germany. This is a German yo yo company, so I don't know they, why they just took. <laughs> one half of the zoo. There is no translation in, in German. This yo-yo is probably from the early 1930s. So this is a, a very early yo-yo. It was made by the Shuko Company and the Shuko Company started back in 1911. So they're, they're an old company. And at first I thought these yo-yos might actually be Bandalores, they're not. Turns out they, they started making yo-yos in the very early 30s. Shuko is known for teddy bears and and these wind-up animatronic type of, of toys and, and they made a lot of different varieties of these over the years and in later years they made cars uh, different different type of toys a huge toy company they went on till 1976 and then they went bankrupt it still exists but under you know different management so to speak but the really long-running Shuko run for a number of years so in the early 30s 
they came out with a series of yo-yos, and most of these had animals associated with them. They had a license from Disney with a Mickey Mouse yo-yo. This one, as it goes up and down, the mouse goes up and down with, with the yo-yo. They have a rabbit. They also made, and I, I would say this is the first yo-yo ball. It has an internal yo-yo mechanism. You can see from the head, the cord comes out of the head. Again, they have a, a mouse and a rabbit, different styles, similar to the just the regular yo-yos. Now, these items are some that have sold for over $1,000, but those are cross-collectible sh uh, shukos. There's a lot of folks that like these little animals and they collect the teddy bears and things like that. Generally, these are worth several hundred dollars. Usually a good one you're gonna see going in the five to $600 range, but I believe a couple of the Mickey Mouse ones have sold for over $1,000. The interesting thing about this is, and I'm gonna just take a close look just to make sure the um, letters didn't get rubbed off. No, they didn't. This, this, this is a good seal. Since this was made in Germany, it said made in Germany on a lot of these Shuko yo-yos. This one doesn't say made in Germany, so this was probably made later in the United States. Is it possible that it's not early 30s? It's possible because that company ran for years and years. Shuko yo-yo actually was a yo-yo top, and where this little metal disc is here, that had a little wire pyramid-like spring that fit on there. So you could use it as a top or a yo-yo. You could also spin it and just put it down on the flat disc and, and it would spin. And I think it spins on, yeah, it spins on this side too as a top. So this may be the very first top yo-yo. This is a great, very, uh, very unique yo-yo. Price-wise, one of these yo-yos uh, actually was sold and the difference being is it was mint, and I mean minty, and this, this had a beautiful pattern on it, and it came with the little spring, and it had the original box, and the original instructions in it, and that yo-yo sold for $350. So that's probably about the upper limit that you're gonna see for the value of this yo-yo, because mint in box, you don't get any better than that. It's got a good strong seal. Uh, overall, it's in, in, in very good condition. So you're, you're probably talking, certainly not a major, unfortunately, but you're probably talking a yo-yo. And, and the other thing that you have to consider when we're talking about yo-yos, what makes a yo-yo valuable? Well, one thing is age. Obviously, this is an early yo-yo, so that's a consideration. Story and interesting things, that also uh, makes a difference but you also have to have a market for it. People have to covet it uh, to get it up in value. So right now, I would say probably you're looking at maybe $150, $200 uh, as a value for, for this particular yo-yo. If it had this, the attachment to it, I would say add 50 to 75, maybe even more to it. But um, if you consider men in box sold for $350, I think you would be very difficult to, to price it more than $150 or $200. Now, just the fact that we made this video <laughs> means a lot of people are seeing this yo-yo now. And when more people see the yo-yo, more people covet the yo-yo. Sure. So it may have just by producing this video may have increased the value. So anyway, what's going to be the deposition of this yo-yo? So I will tell you, as of this moment right now, I know for sure I've got two people uh, interested in that yo-yo. And from what I'm feeling at this moment, I'm guessing there's three people now that yeah, yeah. Uh, are actively interested. Certainly, I know you said Johans was, there was stuff you were trying to work out a trade with him. Yep. I think that's great. Johans has a fabulous collection. And, you know, I, I want to see this go uh, to a serious collector. This is more about uh, preservation uh, of our uh, hobby. But if Johans does not pull through for you, um, I, I certainly want to be that second or third person. So, so this is where it sets right now. I actually showed this to Ben McPhee um, okay. right when I got it, and he told me that he ran down to, to Johans and his father, Tom, to show it to those guys. And... Hans had mentioned that uh, since it was missing the piece, it was probably worthless and I should probably just throw it away. But ah, instead, no, no, no. he said instead of throwing it away, I should just ship it to him. So, <laughs> yeah. 
So it leads me to I can, believe. I can work out a better yeah. trade yeah. than that. Um, <laughs> I will tell you, I showed it to another collector friend of mine, and I went and did a little due diligence of my own, and I found the one that sold, and I also found one on the Yo-Yo Museum page. Okay, And great. both of those are the ones that have the box with this extra spring okay, attachment. Excellent. Okay. I have an offer on the table of five hundred dollars. Uh, I'm surprised with the the mint in box going for three fifty that somebody would pay five hundred. But here, here's here's the point. It doesn't matter what you think a yo-yo is worth. A yo-yo is worth only what you can get somebody to pay you for it, and <laughs> that is a key principle in collecting. So this yo-yo, if you can get somebody to pay five hundred dollars for it. By golly, then it's at that moment in time, it's worth $500. But I am not really one who is known for selling their yo-yos. Yes. And honestly, I feel like if now, I can work something out. You don't out, have a duplicate of this. I don't have a okay, duplicate. So, so uh, Dano the Mano is going to violate one of my prime rules of yo-yo collecting. Never trade something you only have one of because you probably will end up regretting that much later in life, but anyway. And I feel like I feel like if ha if Johans is really um, interested in this thing, I want him to have it. I believe that he's got a collection that it's missing from if he needs it. And I have, feel the same way for you. Um, I think that most people probably know that I'm all out there looking for rare Duncans and rare Playmax yo-yos. So for me to get this into the proper collection for the right yo-yos, it would definitely be worth it. Sure. So I will not right, be well, trading the Flores. Though. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, thanks for uh, sharing to me the just having it here and being able to see it and be able to tell people about it and a little bit of the history. Uh, it made my day. So Dano, thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks, Lucky.